Hey there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Today I'm here to talk about a book that made me think and opened my mind to new possibilities while also telling some entertaining stories along the way. It's Everything for Everyone, an oral history of the New York Commune 2052 to 2072 by Emmy O'Brien and Aman Abdahadi. This is speculative fiction structured as an oral history. So we have the two authors self-inserting themselves as now rather elderly folks. Uh, interviewing people and asking them about the history of the commune, what's like living in their commune, how it's different from the other communes next door, their personal wants and desires, and all kinds of things. And the structure, if you've read oral histories before, especially like by Studs Terkel, or even the fiction novel War Day, more often than not the interviews are edited and made into monologues, but they didn't do that here. And at first I was a little bit annoyed because it doesn't read quite as well, it's a little bit more choppy, but it turns out to be almost a justice issue because they wanted to, people to know that they weren't going to change their words at all. They weren't going to edit them to make it sound like they said something different from what was actually said. So I was okay with it once I realized why they were doing it, but at the same time, I kind of like, they're all edited into monologues. I think it just reads better. Before we get into the interviews, there is an introduction, which befitting for an introduction to uh, oral history is kind of dry, uh, but it does set up the history of it. It kind of gives us a hint as to what kind of technologies are available and what their aim is for the project, which I think is great. And then we go right into the first interview, which is a woman who was there at one of the big first battles at a food distribution point um, fighting against the police to kick them out of the neighborhood. And that was one of the first major communes that was set up. So. And this is where, like, and there's all kinds of interviews. There's one where it's a guy who was there for the liberation of Palestine and what that looked like. There's an interview with a kid who's never known capitalism, so it's really interesting to see what they thought it was like growing up in the commune, what they saw as pluses and minuses, and they just can't believe how things were in the bad old days. Very varied points of view, especially as far as gender is concerned. And I do want to say the authors, they're both on the trans spectrum and one is Arab. So I think that added a flavor to this and it just made it more inclusive in general. And I really appreciated that. Using oral histories as a way to tell a broader story is an interesting craft, I think. And it's one thing to do it in real life and O'Brien has done it in real life. And it's another thing to do it in fiction and to use people's individual stories as the way of telling a bigger one. And you can tell very clearly which parts were written by which person because the authors are self-inserted. And I get the feeling that O'Brien took things a little bit more literally, like she would more often talk to people who were at a big event or knew about the structure of a big thing and be like, okay, walk me through this because I, I wasn't there or I didn't know what was going on or I don't understand the structure. And it's a very literal telling of this bigger idea. Whereas for Abdel Hadi, and I ended up liking her sections a little bit more, she gets really in deep with a person that has a person, it's obviously a personal story, like this guy who was there for the liberation of Palestine. But through that individual story, we get the basic shape of the bigger event and how things went down, even though he's mostly talking about stuff that's extremely personal to him that he saw with his own eyes. I also like how Abdel Hadi doesn't refrain from showing enthusiasm in her interviews and she's like there'll be parts where she's like wow that's incredible what's going on that happened wow and i appreciated that kind of as a reader insert at the same time she used some ableist words that i kind of wish she wouldn't have on the other end of the spectrum o'brien tends to be a little bit more calm and a little bit more measured at the same time that allows for some interesting moments in later interviews that end up coming around that really made me think. So to me, it feels like O'Brien is coming at this more as a thought experiment, while Abdel Hadi is more about the stories and letting the wider picture be known from that. I like that we get to see not only how the commune originally forms, and it's around food insecurity at the very beginning, but to how that leads into the future. So from the very beginning, it was about getting people fed. And even, you know, decades later, if you're in a commune, you have to show up for your two meals a day. That's almost a requirement for being in the commune and being together as a group. 
There are a certain number, depending on the commune, hours. You might work three hours, three times a week, doing stuff for the commune, whether it's food prep, whether it's childcare, whether it's maintenance of buildings, whatever. And then you might have a couple of two hour shifts doing something that's more for you. Um, maybe it's like, it's a little bit more of a reach. It could be studying, it could be doing something more specialized, what have you. A bunch of my questions were answered over the course of the interviews, but every once in a while there was one, and this is largely due to my own personal interest that I felt wasn't quite covered well enough, then again, you can't really expect all of them to be covered in oral history, but for me it was right after the commune was formed and they pushed all the police out and supply lines and everything is all in disarray. What did diabetics do? How did they get their insulin? How about people on dialysis? How did they fare? Uh, I didn't feel like that disability mindset was covered quite so well, but then again, again, this is my own personal interest. So, but overall, I felt like I had a pretty good idea of how everything came together and how it continued on. There are funny parts. There are a couple sections that took my breath away, like some hard decisions that were made that were kind of gray. Like not everything is happy and hunky-dory. And what I feel though is that these authors are trying to dream a future into reality. And the idea that even if things go really bad, if climate change ends up ruining all kinds of stuff, if the political system, becomes eroded and has no meaning anymore. If all of these awful things happen, there's still an out. There's still a way to create a society that is better for everyone. And even though there is no democracy in the sense of like elected representatives in Congress and stuff there, that there are some systems for social justice and there are systems for reconciliation. There are all this talk about mediators and what happened to somebody who abused a kid and all that stuff. And there's going to be a whole bunch of content notes down below, but do know that for most of them, it's mentions in the past, because if you just look at that list, it's going to be pretty horrific, but it's mentions in the past of things that have happened. And it's more to show how they were dealt with than in-depth explorations of each incident. So if you're interested in what a world could look like without capitalism, where people actually come together and work for a common good, a world where there's some Technology has moved on in some aspects and anyone can gestate a baby. It does not matter on your sex or gender, like all of this fascinating stuff. If this sounds interesting to you, I suggest you check this book out. It was an engaging read for me. It made me think and it made me wonder about the possibilities of the future. So those are my thoughts on everything for everyone. If you've read this book, if you would like to read this book, maybe especially if you've read it because there's so much to talk about it, let's have a gab down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.